and I see a lot of reasons for hope. So I'll end by sharing just three. So first, I see a potential for a lot more nuance going forward on anything gender related. There's a lot more recognition of intersectionality and movement away from stereotypes and thinking about women as a homogenous group. Both the pandemic and Black Lives Matter movement have driven home the absolute importance of collecting gender disaggregated data. So by gender, but also by race, by ethnicity, by ability, sexual orientation, age, much more. We need much more nuanced data because ultimately we need much more nuanced policy solutions. Second reason for hope is that I see much more attention to power, which ultimately involves the use of more feminist approaches. I see growing conversations about inequality and about changing systems and practices that go far beyond representation to look at power dynamics. And that's how we need to remove barriers that prevent people from realizing their full set of rights. And third, we're seeing relationships changing between young people and governments. And governments generally in the people that they govern, but particularly with young people. So people are seeing treatment of others around the world and can compare how governments are treating them. You know, they see on the phones that they carry in their hand, the extent of inequality, the access to basic rights that other people have. And I think government itself now is more important than ever, but the ways that it engages citizens have to change. And young people in particular are really redefining what people expect and will accept from those who govern them. And that comes back to women, peace and security because it involves all people, particularly women, having a real voice in decisions that affect every aspect of their lives. And to me, that's the essence of women, peace and security.